So let's talk about how to read or write a scientific paper. Um, you're going to be writing a scientific paper and I've given you a paper to read to kind of model your paper after. I want you to notice how it's written, the parts, uh, the way they describe things, the things they don't do that you would normally do in an English paper. These are the things to pay attention to when uh, writing and reading a scientific paper for Bio 1. Now, before I go too far into this, I want to point out that a scientific paper like the one you've read on Piranha and the one you're going to write is what we would call a primary source. A primary source is a paper written by the scientist who did the experiment. For example, here is a paper on a feathered, uh, a feathered dinosaur tail with feathers trapped in amber. And then it has the lists of all of the scientists who worked on it and that was published and it was peer reviewed, meaning it was read by other scientists who then, what they would do is they would say, well, I think you should talk about this or you should talk about this or have you ever thought that maybe that's not really feathers but maybe that's something else? You know, they'll critique the work and then the scientists have to revise their paper before it's published or it might be rejected from publication. But if it's been published, you know it's been through other scientists' eyes other than the authors before it was published. So that's a primary source, a peer-reviewed primary source. Now secondary sources are sources where they read the author's paper and then they talk about it. So your textbook might be a secondary source. Or uh, Science News for Students, a great website by the way if you're into science. Um, there's There it is, dinosaur tail preserved in amber feathers and all. So that's not the original research, right? That's a secondary source, not peer-reviewed. It's just what some blogger has to say or some article writer has to say about the science. So secondary sources we typically don't use in our own writings as a citation. We try as much as possible to cite primary sources. So the peer review process is when an author like you writes a paper, then it would go to um, peers. So by peers, I mean other scientists that study the same kind of stuff. They'll review the paper and look for weaknesses and things that the author forgot. And then they might send it back to the author for edits. And then it'll go back to the reviewers again, and then it'll go to publication. That's typically how this process works. So First of all, of course, you also have to be careful in the modern age of the internet for really bad writing, like uh, just made up stories, uncritical reports, even scientific looking papers. You have to make sure that the publisher of that paper is legitimate because in the modern era, there are publications where you could write a Bio One lab report, send them a couple hundred bucks, and they'll publish it. It'll look just like a peer reviewed journal, but it'll just be what you did in lab or it'll be something you made up. So you have to be very careful. Don't use just Google to find primary sources. Maybe Google Scholar if you make sure the source is good, but try to use library databases and Google Scholar and things like that. Um, if you're not on campus, make sure to use the library database because Google Scholar won't find as many things when you're off campus as when you're on campus. So uh, try to use the library databases to find good papers when you're citing something. All right, so um, first of all, you want to have a good title. Uh, this is an example of a title of a paper on uh, how alcohol damages cell membranes, right? Uh, your title should be clear and concise. Tell the reader what your paper is about. So you wouldn't want a title that was just cell membranes or a title that was just called Photosynthesis Lab. That's not descriptive. You want to have a clear descriptive title. So here's a title for the paper we've read. Safety in Numbers? Shoaling Behavior of the Amazonian Red-Bellied Piranha. So it tells the reader kind of an idea what the paper is about. Hey, maybe there's actually safety in numbers. Maybe it's not about piranha eating everything in sight. And then it's about shoaling behavior. And they even tell you what critter they were looking at. Then you can see the author's names below that. Then they have an introduction. And in the introduction, you give background information, like a pre-lab. You tell them enough background so they understand why you're doing your paper, why you're doing your research. Um, you're going to introduce what organism you're studying. Um, you're also going to present your hypotheses in the introduction. And notice how it's written. Um, you're not going to see them, uh, first of all, it's typically written 
Um, you, this paper actually uses the word we, oops, uses the word we occasionally, but most papers will be in the third person. So um, that's typically how we write them in bio one and bio two is in the third person. So rather we did this, you would say this was done, right? And here we see citations. You can see the author's last names. These are papers they read, and then they cite information from those papers to make a point. So they don't actually quote the authors. You never quote authors when you cite them. You paraphrase, you take information from their paper, put it into your own words to make your own points, and then you cite them. Now for uh, Bio 1 Lab Report, typically you're going to be citing... Um, You'll be citing uh, things like the textbook because I'm not going to make you dig out primary sources for this. But in other um, other activities you'll be doing, you may well have to cite primary sources. All right, uh, then there's a materials and methods section. This will be pretty short for Bio 1, but this is uh, how and where the experiment was conducted, how data was analyzed, and it's written in narrative form, not as like a recipe. So you tell them what was done. And you don't have to tell about crazy details like a 25 milliliter flask was used. Uh, I was wearing tennis shoes and I had on glasses. You know, you, you leave out that little stuff, but you give enough general detail that someone could uh, replicate your experiment. In the experimental results section, so the results that you're going to have a written section where you describe what happened and you describe uh, in, so in, in words, you describe what happened and uh, you give quantification just like you would in a caption, like there was a 50% increase, there was a decrease, whatever. You give any qualitative data you may have seen, like there was a color change or, or, or something got warm or something got cold or whatever. You, you can give that information as well. And you reference the figure like this. So within a sentence before the period, it says figure one. That tells the reader, hey, if I go to figure one, I can see this information. And then they have their figure which is a scatter plot here with standard error bars, just like we do, and they have their caption. Um, but you have to have the written section as well. And the written section is kind of like a caption, but beefier. It can be longer, a little more detailed, describe more of the changes, and, and uh, um, you will reference your figure there, and then you'll have, uh, they can read it, and they'll kind of understand what the graph will look like by reading what you've written, and then they'll look at the figure to verify. Then the last section is typically the longest section of a report, um, or at least about as long as the intro, and that's the discussion section. That's when your findings are interpreted, discussed, and related to what is already known. Um, so here you talk about why your data happened and relate it back to biology. Okay, So you're going to um, talk about whether your hypothesis was supported. You're going to then go into... Um, uh, what happened and why? Not not just what happened again because you did that in your in your results section, but you're really telling me why it happened from a biological perspective or from a molecular perspective. What caused this to happen? And you want to go into great detail there. So you want to dig into your biology and and tie your results into biology in this section. And then you can go on into talking about uh, future work that you might do uh, in the future and things like that. Or if you think there was an error, you can comment on an error, but you don't want to go into great detail there. And then at the end of the paper, you have your literature cited section. It's done in basically APA format where you have the last names of the authors um, and, then, and then their first initial, the year the paper was published, the title of the paper, the journal it was published in, and then the, the uh, journal number and the page numbers. And you have a hanging indent for each one. So here's Bannerman, da 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 da. -da. You can see the first line of the citation is uh, is uh, not indented, but the rest are. That's called a hanging indent. That's how you properly format these things. Don't try to do it with tabs and spaces. Find the hanging indent function within Word to make that work out. So other things to point out, writing in the past tense is usually most appropriate. Write logically and concisely. Proofread your paper. Avoid uh, redundant statements. Um, 0 0.5 inch margins typically. Aerial font uh, size 11. Um, now if you need extra uh, room, the lit sided section can be shrunk to a size 9. Um, I want one page, no more than one page for your paper, including the figure. 
So uh, if you're using scientific names, make sure you write them appropriately. That's when you uh, italicize the scientific name. Um, and make sure that everything is correct in terms of formatting and everything else. If you don't, if you have any questions, you can go to the Writing Center for help. Uh, you can make online appointments with them. Just Google UCA Writing Center. Um, also, bear in mind when you're writing a scientific paper, remember how that piranha paper was written. You're writing concisely and clearly. So you want to get rid of unnecessary words. You want to write as clearly as possible. This paper, when you write, it shows how clearly you think. And you want to show me that you're thinking clearly. If it's jumbled and hard to understand, it means you're not thinking clearly, and I can't give you a great grade for that. You need to write clearly, concisely, get rid of unneeded words, get rid of unnecessary strings of words, like rather than saying, it is likely that, you could just say, likely, Da, 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 da. in the vicinity of can be shortened to near. So you really want to craft this paper well while you're writing and, and that's something that you, you should be able to do uh, as a college student. Um, and just to give you an example of citations, here's an example of a, of a paper um, that, that uh, I wanted to show you. Uh, so there's a paper on vitamins and how it affected the lifespans of voles which are kind of like almost like a mouse okay so here's one way that someone might cite it this would be wrong many people take antioxidant pills however a recent study stated quote our data clearly demonstrate the dietary supplementation da, da, da. you can read what that says we never ever actually do that we never quote from a source that's kind of like plagiarism unless you're quoting something darwin said to make a point you never quote from a scientific paper you know so you rarely will you see quotes in a scientific paper. A better way to do it would be to take the information from that quote and turn it into your own words and then cite the paper where you got that information. Okay? So rather than quoting from the paper, you take the information, put it into your own words, and then cite the source. And that's how we do things in biology. Here's an example of a... Um, scientific paper that's one page long. I'm going to uh, post this as a PowerPoint or as a PDF anyway uh, on, on Blackboard, this, this whole uh, lecture, so you can go to the end and see this example. This is not 100%, this doesn't match up 100% with our rubric, but it's, it's pretty close. So I just wanted to give you an example of a short lab report. Um, all right, so the other thing before I go I just want to show you the rubric for grading a lab report. So this is how you will be graded. Um, title is clear and concise. Name, group members. You don't need to worry about group members since this is uh, this section is online. But if you have group members, put them uh, there as well. Your instructor's name, that's me. Uh, and your lab CRN number is provided. Um, Okay, introduction. Topic is introduced. Relevant background information is given and cited. So background is there. Citations are there. So your book is cited, for example. Uh, the experiment is introduced. Experimental organism is described as well as description of why it was a good choice for the experiment. Why did this particular organism serve the experiment well? A research hypothesis is provided, uh, well-written, testable, um, and informed by uh, information provided from the background. So you want to have a good hypothesis here that really makes it clear that you understand uh, what, what the purpose of the experiment was. Materials and methods, past tense, someone could follow the experiment uh, by following the protocol. Uh, you don't need to worry about citing the manual if we didn't use the manual, but a citation, you would cite the manual if you were using the Bio 1 lab manual here. Results, a clear narrative of the data is provided. Uh, figures are referenced, so that's when you have figure 1 in parentheses there in the text. And then you have properly formatted figures. You can see that. Then the discussion section. Connections between hypotheses and data are discussed and interpreted. Known sources of error are discussed. So... What you would typically do there is you would start off by saying whether or not your hypothesis was supported, and then you would go on to uh, interpret your data. And don't spend more than one sentence on errors because this pap papers are not about all the errors you made, they're about interpreting data. The results of the experiment are explained in the context of background information and broad biological principles, so you're explaining the data, not just telling me what happened again. 
and your conclusions are justified by the data. They are, uh, you want your conclusions to make sense in light of what happened in your experiment. Lastly, we have the literature cited section. References are appropriately cited in APA format. A minimum of three references are used. Uh, for, the, for an online course, we're only going to require uh, one for the, the textbook, uh, but, but typically three. Um, and so that's a basic outline of the lab report for Bio 1440.